And you're still planning to you'll you won't fight again at the end of the year. No. You'll I don't come. Think so. You'll come back next May. Yeah. And yeah. again, probably the Zerto Bebel winner looks. No, to be if, if Zerto, I don't want. I don't want to fight with Mexicans. So I don't want to fight with Mexicans. And and I think Zerto have a lot of chance to win. And I want him to win. If he wins, we will see if I had. I won the rematch with Bebel. I don't know. And you're still planning. Do you still want the rematch with with Bebel? He, he lost now. Suga wins to my Suga. No, I don't want to. I, I don't want to fight with Mexican. I represent Mexico. So. Wow, Canelo Alvarez does not want to fight a Mexican fighter. Yes, he is Mexican, of Mexican heritage himself, and he says he doesn't want to fight anybody who is Mexican despite fighting several Mexican fighters throughout his career. That's what we're going to talk about right now in this video. Dang. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Canelo, hey, Get the f payday, you want payday, I know that. Canelo Alvarez has apparently lost his mind after a loss to Dimitri Bevo. I put this on my Twitter, follow me at Boxing Ego. I says, bruh, Canelo says that he thinks Zordo Ramirez can win against Dimitri Bevo in the fights happening in the UAE. He says he's also rooting for Zordo Ramirez to win. But if he does in fact win, he says he won't fight Zordo Gilberto Ramirez. Quote, I don't want to fight another Mexican fighter. Now, here's the kicker. He says if Bevo loses, then he doesn't want a Bevo rematch. And I said, get this man out of the sport, LOL. Now, the reason I said get this man out of the sport is because this is not conducive to boxing. This is not boxing. If you're claiming to be the best, if you are claiming to be, you know, me Etta, you know, Canelo frequently says stuff like that, or he's the face of boxing. This is not the behavior that we would expect. I mean, can you imagine if a black fighter or any other fighter, but for this example, we'll say a black fighter. Can you imagine if any other black fighter in like modern boxing said, they refuse to fight somebody based on their national pride, heritage, ethnicity, race, whatever. It just, it's unheard of. Canelo's behavior is unheard of, right? Because if that were the case, you would have never got Tim Bradley versus Devin Alexander. If that were the case, you wouldn't have got Adrian Broner versus, you know, Emmanuel Taylor. Adrian Broner versus Sean Porter. Errol Spence versus Lamont Peterson. Errol Spence versus Sean Porter. The fight everybody wants to see at welterweight, Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. Hopefully that fight happens. Wilder called out Anthony Joshua. But in this Canelo world, if everybody was doing what Canelo's doing, you wouldn't have had Wilder calling out Anthony Joshua. Joe Joyce versus Daniel Dubois. I mean boxing would be in a world of hurt if everybody thought like canelo now luckily we got great fighters from all walks of life that don't move like canelo in fact i would say there is no fighter that i've seen that put that type of statement out saying they don't want to fight someone with shared heritage or ethnicity or whatever you want to call it right and this is just more bizarre behavior the zone they have the zone curse continues. They have taken major L's. Anthony Joshua signed him to a lifetime deal after he lost to Usyk. Surprise, he just lost to Usyk again. So now you have Canelo off of a loss, and he's pigeonholing himself, saying that if the Mexican fighter Gilberto Ramirez wins, I don't want to fight him. And in the event that he does win, then the guy that beat me, I don't want to fight him either even though he's Russian or whatever. I mean, get this man out the sport. This is bizarre. This is peculiar. And this should not be tolerated. And the funny thing is, I got to make these videos and check boxing for things that should be, I would really venture to say, common knowledge. Like, everybody should have this response to what Canelo is saying and or doing, right? But that's not the case. You have old media and they'll ask Canelo these things or there'll be a media scrum 
and they're listening to the words coming out of his mouth because Canelo has done more interviews in English. So it's not like there, there's no, there's a language barrier or something. They know exactly what he's saying and they allow him to say it. Now, I get it. A reporter, he's a fighter. You're a reporter. You can't stop him from saying whatever he wants to say. But you sure as heck can ask follow-up questions. Whatever do you mean you don't want to fight a Mexican fighter? Why did you fight Angulo? Why did you fight Jose Cito Lopez? But now when there's some fighters that people want to see, good Mexican fighters that people want to see, because let's be real, at the time he was fighting Alfonso Gomez, who's also Mexican, that was on the undercard of Floyd Mayweather, and the Alfonso Gomez was before Canelo had really, you know, blew up. But if you're claiming to be the face of boxing and Zorro Gilberto Ramirez, if he beats Bevo, that'll be his best win in his career. And you're saying that you outright don't want to fight him for a reason that I've never heard anyone else say. So who does Canelo want to fight? A bunch of British fighters? which is what his diet has been consistently over the last several years. I mean, this has got to be a major L for DAZN. Just like, imagine, just I'm just talking about from a business perspective. Imagine you were doing business with somebody and you were giving them 40 to $50 million and you want to, with that, you want some ROI, I would imagine, return on your investment, and you're expecting them to produce pretty much be the Mexican Mayweather and produce big events that Floyd Mayweather did, big fights and the biggest fights of that year like Floyd Mayweather did, and then you have somebody alienating all of this competition for no reason. If Bevo loses, I won't fight him. Anybody who's Mexican, I won't fight him. Okay, what about David Benavidez? He's half Mexican and half Ecuadorian. So does that count? Would you fight somebody who's not full-blooded Mexican? You know, does David Benavidez have to pretend he's 100% Ecuadorian and then you'll fight him? And, you know, th another thing that's very foolish about it is what, what if you don't know what somebody is? Like, there's fighters that are from, let's say, Argentina. And some people would think they were Mexican like, for example, I remember Carlos Baldemir, right? Some people thought he was Mexican, but he was from Argentina. Similarly, when Roy Jones moved up to heavyweight and beat John Ruiz, right? And then later on in life recently, Andy Ruiz became the first Mexican heavyweight champion of the world when he beat Anthony Joshua. I had certain people in my comment section when Andy Ruiz did that. And they were trying to correct me because I said Andy Ruiz was the first ever Mexican heavyweight champion of the world. And they're like, oh, no, that's incorrect. John Ruiz was the champion, you know, the one that fought against Roy Jones. And I said, that's incorrect. John Ruiz was Puerto Rican. So he wasn't Mexican. So in a situation like that where you don't know what somebody's background or ethnicity is, then how does how does that a determining factor? If you guys understand what I'm saying, like I've seen dudes like imagine if Errol Spence said I'll I'll never fight a black guy, right? Some people think that your Dennis Ugas is black because he's Afro Cuban because he's Cuban, right? So in a situation like that, it just becomes too confusing. It becomes too confusing. So Errol Spence, you're basically saying that Errol Spence would be profiling. Hey, I don't want to fight a black guy. Okay, Ugas is from Cuba. You know what I'm saying? So what category does he fall in? And I'm not talking, you know, we can go deep down his his ancestry to determine what type of blood was in. I get it. But what I'm saying is in general, how is that the standard for boxing where we have these roadblocks that we create based on someone's origin or background? I mean, Canelo really looks pathetic and no one outside of myself seems to have a real problem with this. Let me know what you guys think. I'll make several videos about this because I got more to say. SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. I'm the best in the business of y'all. Introducing Super Thanks. 
right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.